I'm going to present uh, on accessible documentation today. And I think that's one of the things um, many technical writers tend to, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use the word ignore, but uh, rather it's at the bottom of the list because we already have so much work to do. And this is one more um, add on that needs to be taken care of. And sometimes people uh, or technical writers kind, to, kind of tend to not pay a lot of attention, but it's really an important aspect of technical communication. And we need to be really uh, careful when we design our content and when we write our content. So uh, I've created this presentation from both design and uh, writing perspective. And one of the principles that I try to uh, inculcate in my work is that I try to think about accessibility before I start my work or before I start my document not after I am finished with all my edits. This helps me uh, a long way in uh, daring to the guidelines of accessibility and also how it is gaining more and more importance as our field is progressing um, and getting in the same uh, like documentation is also considered a part of product more and more these days so it's important that we take care of the accessibility uh, can you see the presentation yeah okay so uh, accessible documentation uh, this presentation is uh, created on the basis of a course, a LinkedIn learning course that I did by Derek Featherstone. Uh, the name of the course is Accessible Design. If anyone is interested, uh, please, it's, uh, you can go and do it. It's an immensely helpful course on LinkedIn learning. Uh, if you already are a member or, or, or a pro member, you, you'll get it for free. Or else if uh, you start a trial membership, uh, you can get it free for 30 days. Um, so uh, people with disabilities are trying to accomplish the same goals and the same tasks as you and me. They just might use specialized tools to do it. So, so this is very important that when we um, create, a con uh, create anything or uh, specifically create content in our uh, context, we have to uh, be empathetic, uh, empathetic to the users and users are of varied abilities and we have to make sure that we are trying to cater to their needs. First uh, point that uh, I would like to make is make sure that when you work on your personas or when you uh, map out the users of your product, make sure you have uh, some personas who are uh, differently able. For example, uh, this persona here is of Giovanni. He uses artwork to create awareness. He needs, uh, he's on the ASD spectrum uh, or the autism spectrum disorder. Uh, and he needs clear and simple instructions. He needs make, to make to-do lists and is looking for a gift for his best friend. So the, as simple as that, if you create a persona uh, who, ha who has a different ability, it will help you in creating accessible documentation. So it will help you try to find out what their mindset is, what their motivation and goals are, and ultimately what their functional needs are. What do they need to achieve when they are performing a task or trying to understand a concept? or trying to learn something from a tutorial. Uh, accessibility from a visual perspective. So here uh, you have a picture of two graphs, line graphs. The top one is looking slightly different from the bottom one. Uh, so from a visual perspective, when you, when you use color or you, when you use uh, images or graphs, make sure you don't just use color 
but you also use patterns to highlight the difference. For example, in the top graph, you'll just see that the different lines are colored in different uh, manner. But um, someone who is visually uh, colorblind may not be able to really see the difference in color. So if you add patterns or uh, maybe some solid lines, some pattern lines, or you use shapes as well, it might help a person with color blindedness. You can also use a color contrast tool. Uh, I have added a link here and I'll share my uh, slides if anybody is interested uh, to use uh, the color contrast ratio and make sure that your color contrast ratio is appropriate in your docs. Another important thing is uh, animation motion. Um, we often use animations, videos, GIFs, uh, or GIFs, and so on in our uh, content. And it is important that you have an option to switch off the animation for someone who is not comfortable with the animation. There's also something called the parallax effect that when we scroll the background of the web pages move at different speed than the foreground. We see this a lot these days in many websites and a person with a vestibular disorder like vertigo may not be comfortable with the parallax effect. So make sure that when you create such content, uh, there is an option to uh, disable the parallax effect and it's probably not completely in your hand. Sometimes you work with web designers and developers, but make sure there is that option because ultimately uh, you are the owner of the content when you uh, present it to the users. Also flashing content can cause seizures in people with photosensitive epilepsy and we need to be very uh, careful about that. Uh, for example, the strobe light trigger, uh, there are strobe light trigger, war trigger warnings in movie theaters and amusement parks because it can really cause, and I, I personally uh, experienced this on my last trip to India that um, on our plane, uh, there's a, there was this person who got an epileptic uh, seizure because of the flashing light uh, she, she was sitting near the window uh, or near the the wings and there was continuous flashing light there and it it is uh, these things are we are not aware of such small details but Derek Featherstone has made uh, very important observations in his uh, present uh, his course so I think we should be uh, it's it's always helpful to make uh, to f know this information also in terms of proximity and grouping if if there's a video and there's uh, these uh, these uh, at the bottom you have this timestamp so make sure the timestamp is at the top of uh, the button and not somewhere in the corner because some people uh, need uh, focus indicators to see the content and if you have a focus indicator in the case of the yellow uh, image, then you can also see the timestamp along with where you are. But if you look, try to do that at the top here, you can see that uh, the timestamp and the cursor or the slider is, uh, is not close to each other. It, it can be far away from each other. So someone with the tunnel vision might not be able to access it properly. The one, the one most important thing for accessibility is keyboard navigation. So every content that you create has to be accessible with a keyboard and users must be able to complete all the tasks with the keyboard. And this is a must. It, it is very important that you create a content which is accessible with the keyboard. Some people may use keyboard for navigation for use with assistive technologies like screen readers, but some people may not use screen readers and yet need the keyboard as they cannot use the mouse. For example, someone with arthritis. A keyboard trap is like when your cursor cannot move forward and backward 
and needs to use the mouse. So make so test out your content if there is a keyboard trap there and make sure you document the keyboard fl uh, flows to avoid this. The flow of content, uh, the think of the steps needed to complete a transaction or navigate to read content with a keyboard and design your content accordingly. One more thing is about the touchscreen accessibility. We use a lot of touchscreen on our um, devices these days. And while designing content for touchscreen in interfaces, it's important to remember that some people may never use touchscreen to operate. For example, a visually impaired person uses a screen reader. Uh, radio buttons and checkboxes are easier to use when we design larger size buttons and space them out more for people uh, who are not very comfortable using the touch screen or who have who uh, who are older or maybe they have um, an arthritis or maybe they have some other limitations gestures as well are um, it's very important that gestures like slide to confirm uh, we use them on a regular basis many people use them but some people may not be able to use those sliders for uh, various reasons and their limitations. So make sure that you use gestures, but also there is a mechanism to use something else along with the gestures. Audio and video. This is something that many are aware about and we do it uh, as technical writers a lot. So what is the purpose of your content? Is your content informational, functional, or decorative? Informational content includes text, images, text-based equivalent transcripts. The transcript should easily be downloadable and easy to read format for use. So if you have a, a video content, make sure to include alt text with images, uh, transcripts or audio files for podcasts and so on. What is a functional content? Functional content, for example, uh, images that are parts of links. For example, if you click on an image and it gives you some kind of a, a redirection or a result, then make sure you have, use the right alt text in those images. Some images are decorative and they may not need any text equivalent. Um, again, captions on audio descriptions are important for uh, your videos. All uh, accessible forms, what are accessible forms? So when you use or you create a form, a form that can be filled up for, uh, for any particular uh, reason, then you make sure, you should make sure that you've labeled the form fields appropriately. It, it, this, you can, I mean, uh, in my work, I use data, but some people use HTML, some people may use something else, but make sure that there are proper labels in the form fields because the screen reader uses those labels and it helps the people with visual disabilities to read your form or use it appropriately. It's also important to use placeholders for formats like dates, so someone who has a neurological disorder may be easily uh, able to understand uh, what that particular field is about. Is it about a date? If it's a date, then put a right format placeholder like month, year, and or date, month, year, and so on. It helps a lot. Um, also, if you have any error messages, place them above the form field. For example, if you say, if you want to say that um, maybe the password is wrong, make sure that the error message placement is above the form field. It, it is a good accessibility practice. And the last thing which um, I would, uh, it's not so much a part of technical writing, but still we uh, organize events uh, so many times, even as technical writers, sometimes we are just like this particular event, or we might be a part of some organi uh, team organizing events. 
So make sure that when you organize an event, include a checklist in your RSVP asking if any attendee requires assistive listening device, captioning, large print, wheelchair access, and so on. And if it's a venue ev related event, then also check it for other things. Um, this is not about web accessibility, but this is just general good practice. And lastly, I'll just add a, I added a list for documentation, specific uh, documentation related tips that use an accessibility tool to test your document. For example, the WAVE tool, which is also available as an extension. It is very helpful. Uh, if you use it, you'll know what's wrong with your, or, or if there are any problems with your document right then and there. Also make sure you use the right level of headings because it helps the screen readers Words matter. It's very important that you use the right words. Avoid using words like above, below, left, right, high, and low. Uh, if you look at the older documentation, people, uh, technical writers used words like click the above or, or especially on uh, the top right menu or top left menu. We as uh, the new or uh, the uh, progressive technical writers should avoid using words like this because many people will not understand what it means about by the words above or below or left and right. So it's very important that we don't use these words in our documentation. Um, make sure you add alt text to images and add closed captions to your video content. Also be very inclusive in your content in terms of gender, race, or any other uh, things that you think are important. And remember to use personas of users with varying disabilities. Lastly, I would uh, just like to share the references that I used. Um, these are the references. And I think that's the end of my presentation and I will I'll stop sharing. Thank you, Mansi. That was very enlightening. Um, however, uh, in India, we've, we are very, very insensitive. Forget about even accessible documentation or a product. In general, we are very insensitive people to um, people with varied abilities. <laughs> uh, how do you think, are there, how do you carry out the exercise of sensitizing writers to the abilities where that others other people have i think it starts with training uh, we are not uh, we uh, as in if you look at uh, if you compare you, uh, the western world and our country the difference is that there's a lot of training here about sensitization which we lack i did not i wasn't aware of web accessibility on uh, before I joined the course that there's something called web accessibility. And I, I was really totally fascinated by it. I wasn't even aware that a lot of content that I create might not be accessible to other people. And um, just learning about it made me empathetic and sensitive to the needs of different people. So I think if there's more training that would be helpful and somehow in India, <clears throat> we still don't have the legal um, requirement to use these uh, guidelines. Whereas in the US or in the UK or maybe in Australia as well, um, there is this legal compulsion that you have to use it. So the industry uses all these guidelines because it's a legal requirement. And I think um, if we have that in India, and I think eventually we should have it in India as well, a legal requirement, then accessible documentation will um, be like just uh, another checklist that we go through while doing our work. So I, I hope that answers. Yeah. Thank you, Mansi. And we look forward to more such trainings from you and help us get more sensitized to the needs of other people. And we really appreciate that you woke up early in the morning to share your knowledge with us and learnings with us. Thank um, you. I hope my voice wasn't sounding too weird. <laughs> no, no, you were perfectly fine. Um,